here on Linear Rock. Welcome, Don Broco. We want to uh, increase your Italian fan base here, so we're gonna ask you to explain us more or less what is your style. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> um, yeah, our style is, uh, you know, we're a rock band. Um, we love bringing in, you know, a load of different ideas and influences into our music. So, you know, if that's kind of a little bit of pop music, some funk, uh, a little touch of, you know, heavier, heavier distortion in our guitars now and then. You know, it's it's kind of anything that we, we feel kind of makes a good song and, and is fun, upbeat kind of rock music. Uh, yeah, we, we try and make our own sound from that, really. Okay. Which is we, kind of tough, actually. So I haven't really answered your question. I know, I know. It's not, <laughs> it's not always a box, but still, yeah. you have to. You have been also compared to Maroon 5, and some people say that you could be the new My Chemical Romance, so you could go on an emo line. Oh, very cool. Okay. Do you agree with that? Or you're kinda... I guess, it, you know, we, we like My Chemical Romance, we like Maroon 5, we like both of those bands. So, so yeah. yeah, I guess somewhere in the Cross middle. Between the two. Yeah, why not? <laughs> And about your style, do you work it on song by song? Like this song I feel would be rocker than the others or you just trying to stay on a line uh, and you make your song work for it? I say definitely song by song. Okay. Yeah. Um, usually, you know, um, you know, Sai and Tom will come up with some ideas and we'll just we'll we'll just go with the feeling of that, you know, and a lot of the songs start off very differently. Some might start very kind of basic, very simple, very, uh, you know, minimal, uh, like, a, I mean, one of our songs, I think, on our last album, we thought, okay, this this doesn't sound like Don Broco, this guy is too funky, it, it sounds like, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, Bruno Mars or someone like that, okay. and, uh, you know, once I put my vocals on it, and, you know, Sai develops the guitar parts, and Matt smacks his drum down on it, it just, then the songs feel like Don Broco songs, but... Yeah, we sort of take every song um, on its own merit and develop it individually. Um, and then luckily, by the end of the, the writing process, we normally have a bunch of songs that kind of sound similar enough to be <laughs> on an album. Yeah, <laughs> To be under the same name. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. And what are the main differences between your last album and Automatic? Like, do you feel you evolved, you're becoming more mature or just you're fitting in in one box more than one other and also for the meanings if there is something else inside mm. yeah do this i guess with priorities our first album um we wrote a lot of the songs i guess more individually um and with automatic we were very much part of the whole writing process all of us right from the very start you know even the initial the very sort of initial idea, we'd all chip in and we'd write the songs together right from start to finish. So it felt like we all had our own kind of views on every single bit of the song, which actually took a lot longer to write than the first album because of that. Those are two um, years, right, between yeah, one and totally. another? Um, yeah, totally. But we wanted to, to try that way of writing and really sort of critique everything and make everything, you know, be sure about everything before we, we put it out. Um, I think kind of stylistically... Uh, we we focused with the on the new album more kind of polished smooth rock sound. Um, we the first album was it was the first time we've been in a studio. We recorded it in about a week, two weeks maybe. Yeah, more rough and ready. Rough and ready. Okay. The songs didn't really change too much from the original uh, kind of practice room songs we were jamming. Um, but yeah, this al the the latest album, Automatic. We kind of wanted it to to have that that kind of yeah, that polished, uh, you know, big, big band sounding album, um, but also at the same time still sounding kind of very real, like real instruments. It was the first time we got to go into a studio um, and play everything, you know, actually rather than chucking it in a computer and, oh, okay. and, and hoping for the best and <laughs> making it work. So that was really cool. Did you ever had like discussion between the inside of the group? Oh, right? always. Yeah, a lot of times. <laughs> Every day. Like, I want more drums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, definitely. I think it's quite, I mean, whenever there's, uh, you know, four people in a band who all have strong views, it, yeah. you sometimes, you know, you sometimes find yourselves disagreeing on things a little bit here and there. But 
eventually you find that kind of middle ground where everyone's happy. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, about uh, your lyrics, do you have any under meaning in your lyrics? Like, do you want to be um, a voice for the social part of, I don't know, England more or less of your age? Mm. Or is it just like... Let's have fun. Let's yeah, no, I do think, songs. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's one or two songs where there's there's kind of messages in there. There's nothing, um, you know, there's nothing too political or, or anything uh, that doesn't really, I guess, talk to people outside the kind of personal experiences that, mm -hmm. that we're going through as a band or I'm going through. So usually we draw on um, whether it's good or bad or, you know, anything that kind of I've felt in my life that has Uh, cause some sort of tension. That's normally what I find is really exciting and, and kind of inspirational to write about where there's not always a clear path and you have to decide between certain things. Um, so, yeah, and a lot of it is just things that my friends have, you know, happened to them in li their lives growing up or okay. stuff you see around you, really, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, what about, like, Jason Perry is your producer, Uh, did he help you? It was important for you to achieve what you had in mind or he would just like coaching you or just letting you be? Yeah, no, he was great. He, um, he really understood what we wanted to create with the album um, and he had a lot of kind of good ideas and uh, I guess, you know, helping us get to there, whether it was, you know, recording in certain ways. We, I mean, some of the, the references... Um, and the influences on the latest album were kind of those, I guess, those kind of 80s bands where they still sounded, they, you know, they were rock bands, they still sounded very kind of pop and wrote amazing pop songs, but they still felt like real bands. They'd still, you know, uh, you know have like that, that real live drum sound, which sometimes you don't get in, in modern music so much. And you want, when you play, obviously, in a live you know, a show, you, you get that, you, you can't get away from it, but sometimes on record you can lose that, and Jason was really good at helping us sort of really kind of keep that feeling back in the music. Perfect. Same question, but about the Sharp Tone Records, were you free to do your thing or they put some pressure on you? What? Yeah, no, they were great. I mean, we've, we only recently signed to Sharp Tone, so it was, we, we kind of signed the, the contract with them a few months ago. And oh, okay. the first song... Um, with them was everybody and they're so supportive they're you know they're very uh, very passionate guys at that label and uh, everybody for us you know it was a kind of a different different side to Don Broco in a way um, where we kind of just we kind of wrote a song that we knew would be really good fun to play live um, <laughs> and we we sent it to them they loved it and they just came back saying yeah let's, let's go with it and mm -hmm. it was one of those uh songs that we wrote quite quickly, recorded, recorded quickly, quickly <laughs> did a video for very quickly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from our perspective, you know, with a record label who can act that quickly as well and just kind of help get it out and get it to our fans. It was really, really yeah, awesome. They're the best ones. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, talking about everybody, I saw the video. It has like a few USA cliches, mm -hmm. a few stereotypes <laughs> just... Mm. What is about the videos? Like, how important are the videos for you? And you always seem to kind of have the same style, like super funny, mm. kind of weird mm. <laughs> going on. So what's behind it? I guess, yeah, um, you know, the, the videos are a way of, um, you know, bringing some more of your personality across and hopefully showing people something they haven't seen before all the time or something they don't usually see. And, uh, yeah, we find a lot of rock band videos are very boring and they're kind of quite, they're quite standard. You know, it's very easy. We've done it as well. You know, once you do your first few videos where you're just playing in a room, you're rocking out, mm -hmm. doing it. And if you can create some sort of interest or something fun uh, within that, then, then that's great. Um, with everybody, we um, spoke to a few directors and we said we kind of just want to do something completely off the wall, something... <laughs> Slang. And you did. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the, we we had such a good time filming that video. It was yeah, it was stupidly easy as well. Sometimes mm. you're you're in a, a studio for hours and hours and hours just shooting stuff again and again and again. It takes so long. You finally get the video back and you have to make all these changes. We basically got the video back 
and it's it was the same video. It's the same you video see, yeah. you saw. It was perfect. Yeah, okay. so happy with that. That's cool. And uh, what about uh, you perform with uh, Five Seconds of Summer and Bring Me the Horizon? What about them? Do you develop the friendship? You will still play this the end of October, and yes. November with Bring, Bring Me the Horizon. Again, yeah. So what's up with them? Like, do you yeah. enjoy playing with them or? Definitely. I mean, yeah. um, it's been a super busy summer for us because we, we started with Bring Me uh, the Horizon, as you said, and they're the nicest guys. They're super chill. Um, I mean, they've been a band for like a, a long time. So they're, uh, they're like a really close unit of, of guys, um, but really hospitable, you know, to us as a support band. Yeah, it made us feel very at home very quickly. Um, and we're looking forward to going back out on the road with them. Um, and the same with the Five Seconds of Summer guys. I mean, they haven't been a band as long you know a lot younger they're kind of um, young yes and they, uh, they've kind of lived on the road like their band has kind of always just been on tour so they've got a kind of really strange existence I guess mm -hmm. um, which I guess would mess a lot of people up <laughs> but they were just like the nicest guys as well you know super grounded lovely dudes we spent a lot of time with them you know hung out went out a lot um, and yeah, we just had like the best best summer of our lives getting to tour with those two bands. It was awesome. Did you learn something about the life on the road? <laughs> like um, some tricks? We learned how how hard working it is. Yeah. Because you, know, <laughs> you know we had part of you know our experience as a support band is you get to turn up at the venue. Uh, you know the bus stays there. You you don't load in straight away, so you get a bit of a chance to walk around, see the city, relax. And when you're a support, when you're a headline band, you have to get there. You've, so you've got press, you've got to do your sound check, you've got all these other things going on. And, you know, I mean, Five Seconds of Summer as well, they work so hard, like every day, every hour. You kind of got the easy they've job. Got, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they've got like something else to do. Their schedule is crazy. Um, I mean, them especially, they only finished their, their world tour like last week. So they've been on tour since May. May we join them? Maybe before that, yeah. yeah. Before that, April. 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 They, they, been they started in April. They started their tour in April and they only finished it last week. And it was like, yeah, that work ethic is is super tough. So, yeah. <laughs> we learned you got you got to put the work in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, about Italy. Like, it is maybe, I don't know, the first time you're, like, touring the Union... European Union mm. <laughs> and the first time you play in Italy thank you for choosing Milan like the first <laughs> city uh, what are you expecting from this what what do you want to get from it mm. I guess we um, we played uh, an amazing show in Milan with Bring Me The Horizon when we were supporting okay. um, and when we got the chance to come back for the first time as a headline band Milan was like one of the obvious places in our minds we wanted to come back we had the best show here with with the uh, bring me guys um and the crowd like the uh, the public that came to the show was so friendly and so up for it instantly and made us feel super at home and and really gave us such a great reaction that when we were trying to put our own tour together it was like yeah obviously <laughs> Milan, we want to come back yeah let's come back as soon as possible mm. so we're hoping that a load of those guys are going to come back to our show and, and we'll have a great time tonight obviously uh what else Okay, you you got to number six uh, in the UK charts. You were in the UK top ten sensation, some of that. What? But what is your final goal? Like, if you number want one. to see <laughs> number one in the UK chart, worldwide, or like worldwide. <laughs> worldwide. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean that was that was amazing getting to uh, number six in the UK, um, and we've been uh, touring the UK for quite a long time, so it feels like the kind of hard work that we've put in there is, has paid off and we're still growing and it's really satisfying when you get that kind of quantifiable achievement of, oh, cool, we're number six, that's great. Um, but we just want to work hard in the rest of the world and come to countries, you know, like Italy and, and start promoting our band and hopefully doing the same thing here that we've started to do in the UK. I think for us as well, um, as amazing as, you know, getting a really cool chart position is it's, it's the live shows that, we yeah. really, you know, I think hold the highest, you know, out of everything. And, um, you know, the feeling you get from playing, you know, a good show where people are there and they know the words and they want to see you, that's, that's the best thing. So getting to come back to places like Milan and play, you know, great shows and bigger venues, that's, that's sort of the real goal. Yeah. Okay, perfect. 
And I saw uh, that your fan base is pretty <laughs> cool, <let's see. laughs> pretty extreme. You got fan fiction going on, you got photoshops going on. <laughs> Nobody can say a thing about you on YouTube because they will be <laughs> eaten alive. <laughs> so what's your relationship with your fans? I think the, the photoshops are the funniest thing. Yeah, they're, they're so funny. <laughs> Some of them are so weird. They're like so creative as well. Yeah, they're yeah. Like, very creative. Yeah. <laughs> talented fan base. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say talent. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, it's great. I mean, I think, um, you know, Twitter's amazing for, for, you know, connecting with people, you know, instantly and, uh, you know, chatting to people that you wouldn't usually get to unless you're at, at a show and just having, you know, quick conversations here and there. Um, but, you know, they're, they're amazing. It's, it's nice having a supportive fan base who are going to back you and, and help you out, really. Yeah. Okay, the last question, because we're running out. Uh, you made uh, an amazing cover for Ellie Goldwing, uh, On My Mind. Did you have any feedback from her, like tweet or something? Uh, not, not yet. We, I think we did hear, we heard someone from her management. Oh, maybe we did. I think we heard <laughs> someone from her management said she liked it, but that could have been rubbish. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, we're yet to get the, uh, the phone call from Ellie herself. Oh, wait, actually. <laughs> like, just, no. she Let's call you. her now. Oh, Ellie. <laughs> wait, I won the radio. <laughs> Uh, maybe one day she'll see it and uh, maybe she'll like it. Maybe she'll hate it. Maybe she'll go, you guys ruined my song. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Like you never know. <laughs> never know. Are crazy. Um, if you could suggest us other bands, maybe from England since it's the place where yeah. every cool rock band comes from, uh, some other suggestion to, to hear for your fun, so you can... Mm, maybe yeah. something that influenced you, so... Yeah, um, I mean, there's there's a load of, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they, they're doing quite well out here anyway. I don't really know, actually, but I mean, our, our favourite band from, from the UK is uh, Biffy Clyro. Um, and I know they're sort of, you know, they're, they're absolutely massive in the UK and, and, and do some huge, huge shows in Europe. But like they're, you know, they've just released a new album, which is absolutely amazing as well. And they're, they're one of those bands that consistently kind of rewrite the rule book on what they sound like and and how they sort of put their, their music across. So, yeah, they're, every time we'll recommend them, they're an awesome band. I mean, new bands, um, there's a really cool band called Moose Blood who are sort of, they just released their second album um, and they're from the UK. Um, they're really cool. I think, they, I think they're coming to Europe at some point soon. Yeah. They're kind of just starting out uh, like us, getting sort of, finally getting out of the UK and playing new places. So. Okay, we will put the links while you talk. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. yeah, yeah. Perfect. Then, Don Brocco, thank you so much for being here tonight in Milan, tomorrow in Rome, yeah. and then rest of Europe all around. Yeah. Thank you so much, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah, it's great Cheers. to be here. Thanks. <laughs>